Hey, check this out, boss. Check this out, baby. Man, y'all locked in to Really Speaking the Podcast. I need everybody to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. The channel cannot grow without you. We need everybody to hit that subscribe button. Man, today is a very great day, man. I am so honored, man. This guest that I have is the best guest. I don't think it'll ever get top. I don't give up if I interview 100 people. <laughs> man, this man has a plethora introduction. He's the author of two books, produced four documentaries, on period on more than 50 albums, CEO of Hip Hop Fraggy, got Boosie's book deal, Cross the Tracks, Father, internationally known, locally respected, the best that ever did is to get away with it, appeared on major podcasts, Drink Champs, Big Facts, No Jumper, Boss Talk 101, 85 South Show, and he gave us Pimps Up, Hoes Down. Pimpin' Ivory Ken. What's happening? Hey, what's up, what's up, nephew? What's up, nephew? What's up, nephew? This hey. right here, man. This feel good, man. How you feeling, man? Man, with my hands. Ooh, <laughs> with my hands. Hey, man, hey, man you know, they got the, you know, you know, they got man, the socket to the pocket like a rocket, man. Man, this feel good, man. It's just really just had you in here, man, and really sit down with you, man. We two Milwaukee natives, and, man, you've been putting on, man, for more decades than I've been living, man. And, uh, man, I just really want to get to the, you know, some of the, you know, the history, because, you know, right. it ain't no mystery about your history around this no, time, no, man. Ain't, ain't no mystery. So, man, look, I got some questions, man. Like, okay, so, you know, the legend told to use the jump counters, man, rob banks and shit, man. What yeah. your, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, how, that, yeah. how, how you get off of that? Okay, so me and my brother, you know, we was around the mill, you know, doing a little petty hustle. So, you know what I'm saying? I hooked up with this clique, you know what I'm saying? The Hillside Boys and the Latin Boys, you know, which was the nigga Doozy, you know, Bear, all them niggas, you know, Stevie Jackson, J.D., you know what I'm saying? All them niggas, you know, we was just, you know, robbing banks. I mean, they was robbing banks, and I was doing petty hustle, stealing watches and shit. So my nigga JD, you know what I'm saying? He said, man, we got to, you know, we got to, you know, we got to switch it up, right? So, you know, uh, so the nigga took me on the cable one time, man. We was in West Dallas and shit, and we hit the bank, you know what I'm saying? He gave the bitch a bag of chain, and when he get a bitch a bag of chain, she went to the back and counted the chain. JD jumped over there, bam. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We, we go, he run. He said, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to kick you down, right? He said, you know, you know, it ain't, it ain't, you know, jail play. He ain't going to give no nigga no money, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, the little kick down was smooth, you know what I'm saying? So that turned me out. So after that, man, I just went to robbing banks all over uh, Milwaukee, man. And, you know, it wasn't robbing. It was a misdemeanor. And we was underage. So they really couldn't do nothing. So we was taking money, man. We were riding, going by all the jury down at Steins, down there in Wisconsin. And, you know, we going through the hood, throwing, you know, three, four hundred dollars out the window, way before Big Misha and all that was, anybody was doing it, we was just throwing it, just giving it to the hood. Talk to you know, we was the robbing hoods, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We were robbing motherfuckers and giving it back to the hood. Man, so like, so during that time though, like when you was doing that, like, did you end up having to go do some time for that? Like any, well, any of them crimes? Well, well, you know, I got away all the way until I was fucking 21. And so the feds wanted me so bad because they see, they had us on camera, you know, they had us on all this uh, crime line announcement and shit. So they finally put me on crime on crime line, crime line anonymous, and some niggas, you know, Kate got the little reward and shit. So when I got there, I thought it was just a misdemeanor, mm. but the feds was like, you looked at her some type of way. Okay. That was intimidation. So they enhanced the case. They they put an okie doke on me. So now still me facing. A year, mm -hmm. I was facing 20 years. And then they tried to say all the other cases was robbers too. So they said I was facing 99 yeah, years. And I was like 20, son. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, man. I said, I'll be 121 when I get out. You know, mm. every nigga that was down with that shit at that time know that when I went down, ain't no motherfucker get told on. Mm -hmm. I stood on all 10 toes. I did all the time. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I, I mean, I could have told on a thousand motherfuckers, but you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm solid. Yeah, I man. said, you know, hey, man, I did the crime, so I got to do the time. Then I had already been to the state joint, been in the reformatory school, you know, for mm -hmm. some other shit, some gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, robbing jewelry stores. I used to rob jewelry stores, too. I don't mm -hmm. know if you know that, right? Yeah, I robbed jewelry stores. We robbed a lot of jewelry stores around the town, and you know, I caught a little, uh, a three-year bit behind that. So, you know, I, I went in there, man, and they got mad, and because I didn't tell, they gave me the max they can give me, which was seven years. Ooh. And then, and what year was that? You got crazy. yeah. This was like way back in the eighties. Eighties and eighties. So 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 like maybe eighty three, eighty four. So 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 what happened was, you know, when you in the feds back then, you only did like a half your time. So I was only supposed to do like three and a half years. Mm -hmm. They made me do six. Ooh. Because I stole, that's how much money I took. I took millions of dollars. 
So in that time though, when you was in there, like, did you decide then to switch the game up? Like when you converted over? No, you know, I was already in the pimping. JD gave me a bitch when I was 15, 16. So I already had a hole, okay. but the holes wouldn't get money fast enough. The banks was way bigger money and it was less time, you know, it was a misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if any time nigga want a quick 20, 30,000, you know what I mean? Imagine just going in there, giving the bitch some change, and she going to back. When she come back, you long gone. Mm. That's why we never got caught. That's why it took them so many years. I did it from like 16 to 22, and they finally caught me for it. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, so when I went to the feds, you know what I'm saying? You know, first time I got into the Moorish science. I became a Moorish American. You know, Brother Ross Bay now, you know, they got with me. But, you know, I been knew about it cause brother, in 76 when I was in the Cook County Jail in Chicago. My nigga Phoenix, uh, uh, Brother Phoenix, he had put me up on it. He was an L. Rookin brother. But, you know, L. Rookins at that time was fucking with the more science. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me and, you know, they always converting over. Now they uh, Sunni Muslims. And, okay. they, you know, but at that time they was going to, uh, Jeff Ford and them was going to that. Yeah. And, and so I became a more, a more shamanic and I ended up calling it for the joint. So I was the grand sheik in all the joints. So I ran yeah. all of the modes across the whole. And this was in the 80s. Yeah, this was in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, I was, I, I, you know, Rochester, Minnesota. I ran that joint. Uh, 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 Oxford, you know this what I'm saying? Feds with the state. Huh? This was Feds with the state. This is Feds. Yeah. Oxford, Oxford is a Feds federal oh, joint. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I, I, you know, I ran Oxford. I ran uh, uh, Michigan. I mean, uh, what was that? Uh, my, uh, uh, Memphis, MIC, Memphis. Yeah, I know. Exactly. So I was down there. And so I was always a young dude, but I was always a boss. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, you know, niggas bring me all the commissary. We used to put it in the treasure. Niggas come in, you know, we give them food. We give them care package, shit like that. Mm -hmm. You know, we organized. So even at a young age, you know what I'm saying, I had the mentality to organize the brothers. We had Chris, Vice Lord, GD, my, my, my grand, my, my... Hold on, hold on, kid. So where did you get this from, though? Like, who man, you just, and test this, uh, this Think and Grow to? Rich, Think and Grow Rich, uh, Augmentino, uh, oh, the the Mac Napoleon, Machiavellian, the Napoleon yeah, Hill, yeah, Machiavellian. Yeah. You know, I was just always, when, you know, when I got to the joint, I started reading. I didn't, I didn't get into all that game bang. You, you know what I'm saying? Start reading till we get into the joint, man. Yeah, but you know, I was reading. never a game member. Yeah, we were reading I, I, all the game members fuck with me, people, but I never was a game member. Mm -hmm. But all them niggas, they all come to the Morris Science Temple. You know what I'm saying? And any nigga, you know, like all them niggas that was in the feds, you know, Bear, yeah. Bear tell you, you know, Bear, that's one of our homies. You know what I'm saying? They, they got caught up with all that work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I me, mean, Bear tell you, when he came, I was running the joint. Mm -hmm. You know, I got that nigga, you know, out of his cell. And he came and became sales with me and my security. My security was a rolling 60 nigga named Shotgun. He was a crip, straight up crip, but he joined the Morris Science Temple. And he was, so he was my top security. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and, and Bear tell you, man, I ran that whole shit, man. You know what I'm no, saying? No, I'm no. not saying it was religious, no, no, no. but saying. you know what I'm saying? You know, I always been a boss. You know yeah, what I'm saying? And, and, and I was always, all the Milwaukee niggas, I tell them, say, man, come on over here, man. Ain't no I said, man, yeah, I said, man, you the meal, man, come on over here to Morris Science Temple, man. We're going to lace you. We're going to give you some knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Yeah. We're going to teach you love, truth, peace, and the majestic. And you had to worry about that guy. I said, you go out there, you send them drugs. I said, the Mexicans going to kill you. Them St. Louis boys, them DC boys, definitely going to kill you. You know what I'm saying? Because they didn't play. You know what I'm saying? The joint, they don't box. It's all about the shank. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And listen, man, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Uh, that that right there, ain't no history, ain't no mystery about that, man. I want to get into something that's always been on my mind all the years I've been knowing you. Um, Pimp C. Yeah. And rest in peace to Pimp C, man. And listen, Pimp it's a lot of people that don't know. When I say, nigga, this was how Pimp C and Bum B was, mm -hmm. you might as well have been Bum, D, Bum P around that moment. Yeah, I was, was Bum P. They don't know how close you and Pimp C was. I remember being a young nigga, man. I mean, when a man got out of jail, you was right there. Like, yeah. he also had you in the studio. He was this video. It's all documented evidence of you kicking it with Pimp C. Man, tell the people, like, how did that relationship start, man? And what's some of your fondest memories of the, the legend, man, Pimp C, man? Okay, when I met Pimp C, I was still down, right? And uh, I'm in Sharp Town's Mall, and you know, I'm jeweled up and tooled up, you know what I mean? Had the bank on. And I seen this nigga with some mink shoes on, so I looked down, you know, I used to model for Murray, so I'm like, oh, that nigga got a little flavor, right? A little light skinned nigga. So I said, man, I'm signing with this nigga, right? I said, what's up, Pippin? And he said, uh, man, ain't you Pippin Ken? I looked at him and said, ain't you Pippin C? Right away. Yeah, man. We, hey, hey, man, we got you chopping it. And man, I could never get rid of the brother, man. You know, I went to his house, went to his mama house, you know what I'm saying? We he showed me sex tapes and shit of R V bitches and shit, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, this nigga crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? He telling me shit about he said, Man, Ken, you should be a 
a producer. I saw a lot of my little producer. He said, no, neither do all the mother niggas don't love my producer. He said, they got other niggas making their beats. You know what I'm saying? He said, I make the beats and you and you say you made them. I said, oh man, I said, that's crazy. And so, you know, we, you know, you know, I mean, you know, he 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 was really, you know, like into the game. So, you know, I finally, you know, I blessed him with a white bitch, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and said, listen, man, you know, hey man, you know, I don't know what what you want to do with this is a man, but I said, man, this bitch right here, man. You know what I'm saying? She gonna give you that authentication that you need. Mm -hmm. This bitch gonna challenge you. You know what I'm saying? She, she gonna really test your pivot, man. She gonna really see if this shit in you or not, or is, is this shit in you or is on you. And right. so he said, yeah, man. So, you know, pimp mash on that bitch like I had a whole potato, man. You know, and he, and, and he got on on that hoe. You know what I'm saying? And man, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, he, and Jeezy and Bumby and Zero Tape, when, yeah. we, when we was at the uh, Get Throw video, pimp would call me and say, Ken, how did the bitch handle the how did the bitch hand me the money? Did the bitch hand me the money right? And Jeezy and, and Bumbina looking like, what the fuck is going on, yo? Yeah. And you know, but they didn't know, man, I was giving my man the game. You know what I'm saying? Man, we would ride, man, just get on that motherfucking uh ten, man, go to Port Arthur, man, and we go, you know, to different states and shit, just chop gang all day. So, you know what I'm saying? We finally, you know, my man, you know, he called a bad action, he called a little bad lick. We had the shop town mall. You know, they allegedly say up the gun on the bitch, and you know, he came and said, Man, Ken, they tripping. And man, that day he went to jail. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a week later, I went down and I visited him. And I said, Man, what we need to do? I said, What we need to do, man? What's the plan? He said, Man, this is the plan. He said, Just hold me down. So I sent them pictures. I sent bitches, you know, uh, you know, naked pictures, you know what I mean? No, I niggas want naked pictures and I had bitches writing Speaking me shit. Of that, though, how was his spirit when he was in there that you can remember? If you can remember, like, how was he? Was he I down? Mean, was he... I, I mean, you know, Pimp, you know, at some juncture, at, at, at like, some juncture, you know what I'm saying? You know, he was just like, man, you know, send me a couple pictures. And, you know, he, he wasn't really into that, you know, man, take care of me and send me some money, you know. Even though a nigga have sent the money before. He wasn't into that. He was just mm -hmm. doing his bit, you know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. you know, when he came home, you know, one of the first people he asked for was me. And, I, I remember. And niggas was jealous and niggas was mad. It was oh, like, no, 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 no. Yeah. It's, 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 it's real. It's real document, man. It's like, it's evidence of that, man. It's evidence of that. Because I remember when he came home, he definitely he was one of the first people that I seen him in the studio with, man. This before the internet even was here, man. And it's like, man, like, Speaking on his, his his early um his early departure, man. Like, do you can you remember like exactly where you was at when pimps when you got that call? Man, I was in the I was in Atlanta, man. Uh, uh, we 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 had, we had me and Paper Chase. We had a motherfucking I had an Escalade right with me and Paper Chase and Fifty Cent picture on it. We was promoting and and we was trailing in my SL fifty five. It's a SL fifty five. It's a, what they call that shit. Uh, from the little. Um, uh, AMG motherfucking business, right? $200,000 motherfucking bad motherfucker, right? We in that bitch and, and, and we trailing, so we pull up in the garage and over this little house that we was at, you know, we was ducked off in, in uh, College Park. And so once we pulled the truck in there and we was taking the tape, and then, you know, so all I know is I see Paper Chase drop the phone. So, nigga, what's happening? You know, you know me, I'm a street nigga, I'm like, nigga, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, what's happening, man? You know what I'm saying? You know, nigga, we got beef, we got drama, we got to handle some shit. And he said, man, they said, pimp dead again. So, man, I just, man, I just got to hit, call everybody. So I called Rick. And Rick said, yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. And then my nigga 17, you know what I'm saying? And for those you, of them who don't know who Rick is, who was Rick? Rick Martin is the nigga that got us the $3 million deal. That's pimp C manager. You know, he's a cold motherfucker, you know Rick what I'm Martin, saying? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah Rick. I ain't gonna lie, man, dude, Def really, like, Hit hit the hip hop world in the street real hard, man. And it was as long as there's been a lot of uncertainty around his death. I don't want to bring him no old wounds, but I really feel like you know what I'm saying. He 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 ain't go at his own will. You know what I'm saying? If that make any sense to you, man. Rest in peace, of Pimp C, man. Yeah, we got a a documentary coming out called "The True Story About Pimp C," and uh, you know, seventeen and all the yeah. niggas. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, we got a lot of other people that's in there. You know, they speaking on it. And, you know, my thing is, you know, I went there, you know, so I don't like to, you speculate. know, like speculate. You know, mm -hmm. but one thing I can tell you for sure, man, Pimp, if he was drinking syrup and he was blowing or whatever the fuck they say he was doing, 
He been doing that shit for a minute if he was. And you know what I'm saying? I don't know that just said that. You know, any motherfucker that blow, any motherfucker that do sir, they know how much sir to take. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Sleep Avenue didn't take the man out, as they're trying to say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think a motherfucker might have, you know, put too much syrup or didn't, or didn't yeah, cut yeah. the shit right. right and did that shit on purpose. You know what I'm saying? Because motherfuckers, you know, I mean, Pimp is a is a real dramatic brother. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He can be your best friend or he can be your worst enemy. You know what I'm saying? He'll say some shit to break your motherfucking heart. Oh, and, you know, he might have broke some hearts and some spears around that motherfucker. And niggas probably was like, man, you know, fuck yeah. this nigga type shit. Mm-hmm. And gave the nigga some bad, you know, some bad shit. Now, you said something earlier that was getting to my next point on a lighter note. 50 Cent. Now, right. before you say anything, for people that don't know, you was in his most, one of his famous videos from his first album, P-I-M-P. And yeah. the, 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 the coin slogan. Well, Pippa can say, don't, don't down him, cry him. Preach! Preach! I was in that P-I-M-P video with 50 Cent. Man, how did that connection happen? And when you got the call to be in the video, because also Bishop Don Juan, which is one of your other partners that a lot of people don't know, how did that connection happen with you and Fifty Cent? Because that was so, so he was that was get rich or die trying. That was the highest. Yeah, yeah, world. yeah. That, that was, man was ten million. So, 10 so, million so, dollars. so, so. Here's the real story. And I know y'all gonna find this a little bit uh, awkward, right? Fifty Cent was a fan of mine way before I met him. He had a song called Problem Child. In private sites, if you a pimp like Ken, why the hoes don't treat you? Preach if you a pimp like Ken, why the hoes don't treat you? You want a ball like Kirk, no sure they let me teach you. If you the hand of death, you know, like preacher, you know, some, uh, you know, some, you know, it was, it, I can't remember. I'm not yeah, good at like, lyrics, Definitely but facts but like but so 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 when I had a nigga named Dave for cut above limos, all the celebrities used to get his limo. But Dave was cool with me. I said, Dave, you know what I'm saying? When those celebrities come in, let me know what's at, 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 who in town, you know, you know, they're my partner. So I can, he said, so he said, yeah, 50. At this time, I didn't know who 50 was. You know, I, I know who he was as the celebrity, but I didn't know who he, we, we had no relationship. So he said, yeah, the 50. So he said, man, I'm going to bring him to the embassy suite. So my guy, Big Silk, he said, man, let's ride down. Let's bend down on the young nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? He hot. So I said, come on. So, you know what I'm saying? We pull up, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I think, I don't know, my ass on the I think I think I had the 300, you know, the same car that Jay-Z had, that little 300, uh, what's the Lexus and shit, with, uh, with the mustard and mayonnaise on the motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? I pull up, you know what I'm saying? We pimpish as a motherfucker, hey, man. you know, jeweled up and, you know, shit like, so Fit was like, I was like, hey, Fit. He said, Pippa Ken, literally, Fit. I'm not lying. He went crazy. He's like, man, who? who? I ain't never seen. It. Cause you know, I, I'm looking at this. I'm thinking this nigga got shot nine times. This nigga, right. you know, he gonna be like me mugging me and shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the man just embraced me, man. He got in my movie that day. You know what I'm saying? Me shot money, which is the manager called me and said, Ken, we want you to go on tour with us. So I went on yeah. tour. The first tour we did was in Mississippi. He had 10 dates with Master P. Then I went like four or five dates. You know what I'm saying? That's the part. Remember, I don't know one yeah. podcast I said. When I went there and then Jay-Z looked at me like he said, yeah. I got a memory like an elephant. And I said, what the fuck I do to Jay-Z? You know what I'm saying? I mean, and that was at that Rock the Mic too. I was yeah. there with 50, but Jay-Z, I guess he was mad because one of my niggas had... Uh, and 50 gonna confirm this too, man. Yeah, 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 he was mad. Yeah, man, gonna post this on that yeah. page, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna yeah, he was mad. Jay- back, Jay-Z man. was mad because somebody told him that I said, nigga, don't have no real players outside waiting, nigga, we players. But I just said, my partner said it. Yeah, I remember that. You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, you know what I'm saying? Me, it was, that was the last date that I did with him. So I didn't hear from the nigga for a minute. All of a sudden, you know what I'm saying? Me, I get a call mm-hmm. and uh, it was like, yo, man. Fit wants you in the video. You know what I'm saying? Me? And I said, cool. And nigga was like, man, Fit got you on the screen. Every time he played PIMP, he got you on the screen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Me? So I said, oh, okay. And yeah. then so finally, you know what I'm saying? Me, you know, uh, uh, they flew me out to LA. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They gave me a bag, a nice yeah. little bag. You know, I don't think I can talk about it because of the NDA. They gave me a nice little bag. Yeah. And uh, man, me and Fit were just cool as a motherfucker. And Bishop now was like, what the fuck? I'm in 50 Cent VIP room. They got there over in Snoop room. They in Snoop trailer. Snoop had a trailer. So I'm I'm kicking it with Fit. With fit. Yeah. So Fit gave me some shoes and signing for my kids and shit. And I said, I looked at him. I said, Fit, man, I don't want to just be in the motherfucking video. I ain't no regular motherfucker, man. I got to tell my, I got to say my name is motherfucker. And so uh, I think the the the, uh, the, uh, the, the producer was uh, Roberts. So I don't know his name, but he's real famous. So he got together. He said, well, what you going to say? 
I said, when they do the leaders of did, they, they do the leaders of doom, and they, and they shit on 50. I'm saying, don't die on them crime. Pepe King said, don't die on them crime. And 50 just loved it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? And, yeah, that was a famous line, man. Seen by, right now, it's at a billion views on YouTube. Yeah, a billion people heard me say my name. You know how good that feel from a, a nigga being from Milwaukee, man, to really be like, it, like, because it's so much. There's so many people that be so like, Milwaukee, Milwaukee, man, y'all just don't know, man. Some of the richest, realest niggas, the biggest rappers, the celebrity star, man, they done tapped in with some of the most major niggas in our city. And it's like, you always been one of them niggas, man. Every time you open your mouth, man, it's been Milwaukee County, man. And I just love that, how you've been pioneering that for years. And to just, to see that dynamic, man. And um, also, man, it, what, what people don't remember either of, it was a, I can't remember exactly, hold on, was it a, was it a, uh, was it a, uh, I want it in my life, need it in my life, using a juvenile Little video. Flip. No, using a juvenile video. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. I need it yeah. in my life. Yeah. Little that. flip, you I was a little flip that. joint. Uh, this is the way we ball. This is the way we ball. To the wall, to, to the, the window. window. Uh, uh, the young bloods. If you don't give up, blah, 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 whatever, I would give up what? You know what I mean? Now look, I want to get to something, dog. That I, I always wanted to tell you, man. It was. What year you uh, had the uh, the store in Dallas when you was in down in Dallas? What year? Oh, uh, that was about three years ago. Man, listen, man, I swear to God, I got a partner down there from Dallas, Texas. He said, "Man, when Pimp and Ken used to walk through the mall, these niggas used to run up on you like you was Snoop Dogg, man. Like, yeah, man, how I did love you Dallas, feel man. To, to have that love? Because Dallas really love you, man. I mean, everybody I talked to, they said that nigga had a store in the mall. I mean, so niggas used to see that. Man, everybody been there. Boosie, if you go look at the pictures on my timeline, man. everybody, uh, Mo3, uh, Yellow Beezy, they all used to come, man. I think, man, so you know. So was Dallas for them couple years you was down there having I mean, I mean, millions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, but I think what it is, uh, for real, brother, you know what I'm saying? I mean, is I think it's more so running up on you like you a Snoop Dogg. No, nah, but see, I think it's more so when nigg when when a nigga see you on TV, and then a nigga see you the nigga that they met, that resonates. That's that hit like the niggas in Chicago. So that shit hit different. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if, 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 if you if you if, if a nigga say you a cold pimping motherfucker, and then Snoop Dogg or or or, or a ball MJG or Mac Ten, they get in the studio with me. And I'm popping it, and I got six or seven hoes sitting over there, you know, blah, 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 and I'm jewed up and I'm tooed up. Them niggas like, this nigga is really the nigga that we paying, you know, or we fucking with to be on the album. You know what I'm saying? Me and they like, they sitting there, me and Too Short, Too Short, we over at the Too Short house, and they said, niggas, just do what you do, mm -hmm. you know? And then Too Short come and pick me up here, get me at the hotels and shit, and niggas be like, damn, I pull up, he come to the hotel, they be like, damn, that's Too Short. You know what I'm saying? And then, nigga, I come back to the hotel, and the niggas outside, they smoking weed and drinking Hennessy, and I'm fucking with the nigga. They're like, dog, you just you just left. Dude, you just got out. You just was with, with, with fucking Too Short. <laughs> or a nigga be like, dog, you just was on the PIMP video. And that's what niggas love about me. They know I'm I'm a leopard. I never change my stripes. You know what I'm saying? Right. What I'm saying? And I'm, what you see is what you get. And I right. think that that's what niggas is so excited about. They see, they, you know, man, it's really a real nigga. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think that's, you know, that that, that baffle niggas to see that, oh, because yeah. the average nigga, man, and uh, I was talking about Lil Wayne one time, and uh, I was talk, talking to Lil Wayne, and, and Lil Wayne, we was at the studio, and he walked right past me. I was offended. You know what I'm saying? I was like, nigga, I remember, you know, when you, you know what I'm saying? What's up, nigga? You know, baby, all the, you know, nigga, you remember all the cash money trips I didn't talk with you niggas? I'm like, nigga, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. You know, he walked right past me. You know, Juvie now don't walk past me. Baby don't even walk past me. He walked right past me. I know, you know, he was, because I've been fucking with him since he was 14. So, you know, I, I've confronted him, and Wayne, on some real shit, he said, man, you know, man, I ain't mean to harm, man. He said, you know, everybody always wants something from me. You know what I'm saying? He said, you know, uh, 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 you know, here I am, you know what I'm saying? Women are telling me I'm cute. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but people always want something. So when people when people mm. say something to me or look at me, I think they want something. Mm. So he became desensitized to human socialization. You know what I'm saying? Mm. To the real shit. So I can imagine what happened. And I understood what he was saying. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but everybody don't know how to navigate how to be a star and how to be a real nigga. See, the only stars I know is in the sky. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I don't fall into the Hollywood shit. You know what I'm saying? On this kitty, I got my social security card. You know, I ain't never Hollywood. I'm Hollywood. You understand what I'm saying? So that's how I move all day, every day. And that's why y'all can catch me at Playmaker. Catch me on 14th. I'm at, on 14th. 
Yeah. And North Avenue, everybody's strapped. Yeah. Every motherfucker that comes to there got the switches and the motherfucking yeah. extended clips and shit. Mm -hmm. And guess what they say? Uh, what's up, uh? What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Uh? They be mad. They be looking crazy. I, I, one nigga walked through there. He's like, he about yeah, to listen. shoot the joint up. He see me. He said, oh, Pimpin, what's up, Pimpin? You yeah. know what I'm saying? I change niggas way because niggas know that I'm 100. Yeah. And niggas know I'm not going to get the hood up. Niggas know every nigga from Milwaukee know yeah. that if I'm on any album or any tape, I'm saying Milwaukee. I'm going to represent the town. Thanks. Nigga, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, y'all, you know, the Bucks won the championship, but I've been breaking championship the whole this motherfucker for a long time, man. You know what I'm saying? They've been one of, they won a street championship yeah. fuck with me, you dig? Hey, speaking of that, listen, twin, I'm going to keep it real. I got to say, nigga, you the only nigga I know. Nigga, you just sold me the same DVD, nigga, with a different cover. Six hey, man, I sold the China Man twice. I sold the China Man twice, baby. Man, I said, kid, this I sold water this, to a whale. This is your favorite line. Like, I'm like, bro, I got this one. He's like, shit. Man, the niggas in New York ain't got it yet. Niggas in Atlanta ain't got it. Niggas in Cali, like, boy, you put the same cover, a different cover. Yeah, man. Hey, hey, what, what you know, I call that the upgrade, right? I so I put, I, put, I put a new cover cold, every year. No, the, 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 here, here, here's my side of the story. Everybody was like, man, you sold me the same DVD twice. If you bought the first DVD, you should know that this is the best of both worlds. If it say the best of both worlds, I never changed the name. I just changed the covers because, you know, time changed. You know what I'm saying? So I might I might be looking a little fat back then. I might want to get a new picture, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just in case, you know what I'm saying? Y'all want to put me on the man on the bitch want to look. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, man, bitch need to see something, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's handsome, you know? Yeah, okay. And asking for a ransom, you know what I'm saying? But no, nah, I'm just bullshit about that. But no, nah, you know what I'm saying? You know, niggas never say that, damn, mm -hmm. you know, Ken... I forgot the name of the, video, the DVD. Because if you would have knew it was the best of a world, you knew yeah. it was the Ghetto Series X and you would have knew that you already bought it. So, But niggas buy them anyway. And then some niggas just buy them and get, them, get me out their face. So look, I got this I got this segment that I do on, on Really Speaking Podcast. Mm -hmm. It's called Confirm or Deny. Mm -hmm. So um, this, this I got a question. Um, so Confirm or Deny, the hood myths say that you sold Pimps up hoes on the HBO for over two million dollars. Myth. Myth. Mm -hmm. No, it's not true. Not true. Okay, because I was always wondering that, like, man, two not million. True. That's a lot of money, man. Because that we, because I remember four one four escape when I was man, back then. When I was, when I was that young, if I'd have sold it for two million, all my niggas would have had birds. I'd put birds <laughs> in the hood, nigga. <laughs> birds would have been flying man, south, like, man. What two million? Hey, man, I'd have hey, man, I bought a bunch of motherfucking work. You know what I'm saying? Gave it all to my niggas. Here, man, y'all take this shit. Man, the niggas was man. There was so many niggas in there. We're gonna break. We're gonna be right back. This episode of Really Speaking is brought to you by our sponsor, Swift Production. Swift Production has a plethora of movies on Tubi, Circumstance 1 through 4, and also he has one of his newest movies called All About a Check. I want y'all to check out the trailer to All About a Check right now. Leave it. I get to keep all my profit. Every single dollar. Yeah, not the baller. I'm a businessman. Aren't with the lines? No lines. Seduce the camera. Just gonna undress and pretend like you're taking a shower. Hey. Starting a conversation between God and you. That's good. Tell him I said hi, motherfucker. So man, listen, you know it's crazy, Ken. I always wanted to know, man, because you've been in Atlanta putting it down, man, for the time for a long time. I was always wanted to know, you know what I mean, if you know what to speak on it, cool, but it's my mindset, like, why has Pimpin' Ken and OG Big L ain't there? No business together. Y'all two cold niggas from the time. Well, you know, we, we, we was in Pimps Up all now together. OG Big L? That was Big L with the black and white meat coat on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, was, we, we, we used to be together every so day. Like, you niggas but, you, but, but you know, it's like, I, our careers did like this. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He, he was in the music industry, and you know, I was on the other side of the music industry. You know what I'm saying? Okay. He, he was an executive, so he was spending more time 
you know, fuck with his artists and so on and so forth, doing shit like that. Okay, you know right. what I mean? But, you know, it ain't like, you know, there's no beef, no flex, and nothing like okay, that. It's just, just like, nigga, you got the hip hop fraternity. You know, you that too. Yeah. I just always wondered that. I ain't trying to bring up nothing that I just, you know, me being from the town, knowing you niggas, y'all really putting down and y'all respect the field. I'm just wondering because, you know, you've nah, he, he done, done business with a lot he, of niggas. He, he, he actually, uh, he let us uh, uh, have a couple of meetings at his club, Clutch, in Atlanta, like okay. a couple months ago. So, yeah, we have, you okay, know, cool. we just ain't publicized. You know, Big okay. L's kind of low key and mm-hmm. he'll get his money, you know what I'm saying? There's no lot of niggas, we only know this, we understand this. I just yeah. was kind of, that was one thing I always wanted to know, man. So, look, man, I got some, I got some, um, I got some, I got two people, man, I just wanted to know, you know, because, like, they, they've been legendary in our town, and I wonder. Have they ever had any influence on you and do you know him? The first cat I'm gonna ask you about is Leonard Ross. Do you remember the Leonard Ross? Ross? Leonard Ross. Yeah, nigga, I used to be gambling. We used to be betting hundreds of thousands of that time, you know? Man, for Man, real. Man, uh, me and, and uh, Brandon and Elroy and all the players from back in the day, so you, you know? you remember Leonard Ross? Man, I used to, that was my man. I was, I going when he first. Was this regular Ross? I know his brother Tony Ross. I know his whole family. Man, listen, because I'm like, I wonder, like, do Ken know them or? Man, I don't think they know me, man. I was a young player, man. Yeah. And I was having money a long time. No, know? I know that, but I'm saying, you know, they. No, nah, those niggas they, 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 every 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 era from from '76 to now, mm-hmm. I was relevant. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, no, that's a fact. That's a no. Nah, well, hey, listen, this ain't, this ain't no cat. I just want y'all to know. No, nah, but I'm saying every every boss the man has been relevant for at least four decades that I know of. But I every boss, yes, every boss, Lena Ross, you know, all them niggas. Uh, uh, uh my main man, uh, what's his name? Uh, Damn, so uh, I know Lena Ross. That's yeah, all the pimps go. Uh, Sonny Page. Uh, the nigga Rob yeah. Robinson. So another uh, nigga I was saying, uh, you know, uh, do you remember pimping Brandy? Yeah, that's my man. Brandy, man. I swear to God. That Brandy, was a... Brandy, hey, Brandy was my little homie. Brandy, my homie. Yeah, Brandy, man. Because Brandy shot him in the head. He survived the first time. Okay, so, Little Ross? Yeah. We we used to be, me and Brandy used to go in there all the time. He'd be with the nigga building all the niggas. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, that's what that was. Brandy was a cold nigga. Building Earl. So, they, when, when Brandy would come, when I come to join, Brandy would get excited. Now, you take excited, nigga, be like, hey, mm-hmm. man, Ken. I was a young nigga, he like kid. I, I was a young nigga making the merch noise. I had all the big jewelry. I was 21, you know what I'm saying? I mean, had the 280 bins, you know what I'm saying? Little small bins, but it was a coupe. You know what I'm saying? But I was a young nigga having all the money, and them niggas respected me. And them niggas, I never ran with a crew. The only crew I really ran with was JD and uh, the nigga Frog. Those oh, were my okay. crew. Yeah. Now, but the East Side niggas, those were my niggas. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we were family. But I'm saying, you know, I'm talking about from that era, you know, Little Ross. You know, uh, 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 man, you know, Hot Rod, you know, it was just so many niggas, Cadillac Fred, you know, it was niggas, you know, so many niggas, uh, damn, man, my man just had a story, uh, he gonna get mad at me, uh, man, I'm, I'm a Frenchie, you know what I'm saying, I mean, uh, Mark Wade, yeah. all the niggas, man, yeah. those, we was all in that era, man, you know what I'm saying, I mean, Fats, Fats, you know, may rest in peace, my nigga Sloan. Mm-hmm. You know, all the niggas, man, they was, you know, Carl Sloan. You no, know, I'm quite, listen, I was, Kevin Kevin Freeman, I was there 100% sure Kevin you met him, Freeman. but I just wanted to know, like, yeah. like yeah. there's more me letting you know, like, man, that was my man. nigga. Yeah. Every, and hey, listen, yeah. Every, every nigga took keys from Leonard. All of these was taking keys. I never asked Leonard for nothing. I never asked for a key or an ounce. That nigga had all the work. When that nigga died, man, they said that man probably, you know, you, think, you know Big Meats? Yeah. He was the real Big Meech. That nigga was Big Meech from the wall. Now, now, what I was talking about. When I say, he, he was having work like yeah. Big Meech was. When they killed him, when I heard they killed him, though, they, they didn't take nothing. No, they took a lot of shit. And you know, you got to remember, Leonard had about $10 million worth of work on the streets. So when they killed him, all that debt died. A lot of niggas had a reason to take Leonard out. You know what I'm saying? You got to remember, this nigga had hundreds and hundreds of keys. This nigga supplied the whole city. He was like, he was our no, big beach. He I was know. our big beach. Yeah, a lot you know what I'm saying? And he had million money. dollars. Niggas own Leonard. Everybody own Leonard. Mm-hmm. Money. You know what I'm saying? Mean? And then, you know, I know more about the situation. Yeah. I just can't speak on it. No, you ain't you ain't wrong. So look, man, you got a you got a famous slogan, man. The best that did it and got away with it, man. My my podcast is really about, you know, giving the young niggas something to hold on to, grasp, man. And it's a lot of young niggas, man, all around the world that reach out to me, man, like, hey man, 
I need some game, man. How can I get out? What I need to do? You know what I mean? I got some paper and shit. Like, what's some, what's some game you can get the youngies right now if they were just trying to get out the game? What well, they had. Well, in, well, in my book, The 40 Law of Game Pimpots, I said, turn them home is the dividends. Mm. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? What you got to do, you know what I mean? You got to be able to take the money that you get on any level and flip it. See, the biggest problem that niggas made, right? When, when the drug game first came in, in 85, 84, 86, mm-hmm. you know, Niggas got a lot of money. Niggas got a lot of dope. Mm-hmm. Nigga, the BOS niggas came from Chicago. They started robbing niggas. So niggas started buying guns. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And niggas started shooting niggas. Mm-hmm. And then they started doing the enhancement laws. They started doing the drug laws. And what happened was they incarcerated a lot of niggas. Niggas bought a lot of jewelry. I can show you a picture right now. I'm going to show you. I was just looking at it online. I'm going to show it to you. Uh, it's crazy, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Wait, wait to see this picture. You've probably seen it online before. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Was it the picture you sent me? All the oh, guys? Yeah. All yeah. The guys. So, so, show them people that picture I sent you. Yeah, I think it's all. Okay, so, 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 that's how niggas looked in Milwaukee back in the early days. Put that up to the camera. Everybody's seen that online. Can they see that? Do I lift it up or down? Yeah, I can see it. It's perfect. So that's good. They can't see their faces. So that's how niggas in Milwaukee and around the world, Detroit, was doing. They bought a lot of jewelry, a lot of gold. Mm -hmm. What the Italians do? They bought casinos. They bought pizza joints. They bought construction companies. Mm -hmm. So what happened is, you know what I'm saying, we end up going to jail and being broke. Everybody else that got into crime, the niggas in the bootleg days, they end up taking their money and buying politicians. Mm-hmm. So the Italians, they now way removed. Their kids went to college. They own all the clubs and all the construction companies. And where we at? We back in the hood, stuck broke. So all I'm saying, if you get money, invest it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because, you know, you can't beat the system because they 24 hours. You got to sleep. While you sleep, they're working. So you figure if you hustling and they investigate, they're going to pass on to the next investigator. Then they're gonna pay those next best get And they're gonna be up all night studying you and trying to figure out how to catch you. Mm-hmm. So you know what I'm saying? That's why so many niggas that we see go up, they come down as fast as they go up. Mm-hmm. I said three year run. After three years, they get indicted. And then you know what I'm saying? They, they confused because they made so much money and they bought all these girls' apartments and they bought all these cars and they got all these bills they got. So they end up, you know, turning over on their folks. You know what I'm saying? Be like, hey man, hey, he, he. He the real CM, he the real leader of CMB. Yeah, he also Brown. He also Nina Brown shit. So I mean, you know, and they put themselves in that position. But half of them, before they get on the radar, they get a whole bunch of money. All they had to do was take their money, man, turn them ends into dividends. You know what I'm saying? And flip the money. And that's what a lot of people don't don't do. So I tell all young people, man, the same energy it takes to do something negative is the same energy that it takes to do something positive. Right. You know, I didn't make millions of dollars and I ain't so a crack or a crack between the whole back in a long time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been just living off a of straight game. I was there with corporate America. You know, I went mm-hmm. up to Sam and Schuster. I did five or six deals up there. Mm-hmm. Multi-million dollar deals. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing business with distributed companies. You know what I'm saying? Because the same game that I apply to the street, it's the same philosophy. It, you know, like if you if you run a if you run a drug house, you can run any kind of business. You know, it's the same formality. You know, you got your accountant, mm-hmm. you know, you got your product, you know what I'm saying, you got your customer. Same shit, man. So, you know what I'm saying? I can tell them, man, listen, man, you know, just keep your eye on the prize and and, 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 and get out the game as fast as you can. Because walking away and get away is two different getaways. Facts. You know what I'm saying? If you have to, if you can walk away, you really get away. But if you have to get away, then you ain't necessarily got away because they can still be checking for you and yeah. uh, trying to indict you. Man, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I'll be telling niggas like, man, listen, boss, you gonna have two summers. You gonna enjoy two summers out here and go do 10 summers. And I know a lot of these niggas, they, they, they living in this false reality, man. Social media has painted an unrealistic expectation of realm of pictures for niggas where they thinking they chasing this lifestyle, not knowing at the end of the day, like, it's just like the nigga that go out of town and try to talk his way out of something. I tell niggas all the time, you really talking your way into something. You'll never try to talk your way out of nothing. You're going to incriminate yourself. You're not smarter than the people. You just said that they working 24 hours. Mm-hmm. So it's like, 
a lot of young niggas, man, out here getting that money, that setting all money, that hair around money. Like, you niggas got two, three hundred dollars, y'all posting on the internet, trying to flex and all that. Hey, man, why nigga can't go buy a fixer up for 10, 15 thousand, put 30 in? Why nigga can't fix his credit up for some shit, do some major shit? That's a lot of niggas did do it. You know I mean, it's a lot of niggas like, that you see around here, Pimp, you know, they own a lot of real estate. At least they have a major bag. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can, everybody know them. I ain't got the name. Everybody knows these niggas. They mm-hmm. got plenty of money. Mm-hmm. They rich as fuck, but you know what I'm saying? Really get out the game and get out in time. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Man, that's the key. You know what I'm saying? Get, get the fuck up out of time. Like, I'll tell you a story, right? I used to have a spot, right? When I was mm-hmm. hustling back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Because I needed some money. And uh, I made a couple, I made about a quarter million dollars. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had the spot. And it was doing like 10000 a day. And these little niggas working for me, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean? And I would drop the work off. I ride past, I see one detective cop. I said, close this motherfucker down. Immediately. And every time a nigga would go and open up that spot, he didn't get in there. Because I know anytime you see the police cop, anytime you see them folks, man, it's time to cut. So a lot of motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying, when, when, when motherfuckers say human trafficking, mm-hmm. when they change their laws, I change mine. I said, oh shit, human trafficking, what? Life? I'm out of here. <laughs> you understand know what I'm saying? Woo, so I heard that. They, they, they change their laws, I change mine. So Ooh. a nigga got to know yeah. when to get out the game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know, certain things, you know, leave yeah. clues and leave signs and you know, you know, signs and symbols for the conscious mind. Man, listen, that's, I respect everything you're saying and that's 100. I really hope y'all listening and really can take something from that. But I want to ask you something to, from the women perspective, though. Like, I, what I've been noticing and I've been seeing this a lot, you know, I don't care about that cheesecake factory, that list and all that. I want to know when when and why have the women became more masculine and manly and because they keep saying it's because well i had to survive and this and that like why do it look like it's an agenda getting pushed of women becoming more masculine and they trying to feminize the men when did you see that and what what, okay. what do you say to women that think okay, like, i'm gonna break it down i'm gonna break like it, it, it down to your audience right take for example if you look at all of the machinations and the social engineer concerning the black man, how the black man been tricked out the household, and the black woman has been elevated and given all the great jobs, and the black woman been told that she don't need the black man, and every time the black woman get welfare, they tell her that, that if you move a man in the house that you can't no, no longer receive uh, AFDC, mm-hmm. whatever they call it, or, 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 or welfare. Assistance and all uh, Yeah, assistance. Then, you know what I'm saying, you glad to see the family Divided. Divided. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so you did time, I did time, everybody did time. You know what I'm saying? They left children out here. Now, imagine a woman, right, mm-hmm. trying to raise a child your size. You know, I don't know how long it took you to get that size, but I know you grew up, you was a pretty big guy. Mm-hmm. So if your mama trying to whoop you and she's slapping you upside your head, you know what I'm saying? I mean, and you look like a man, what's that saying to your sister? Your sister is losing respect for the manhood because she see a man, but she don't consider you a man, she consider you a brother. But psychologically, her mind is telling her that this is how you treat a man. You know, so the women are disrespecting their children and they treat their young men like they little boys. And these little boys is not even being phased by this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You beat the child up and he ain't even feeling it. And he going out there and when he got out there, he meet real men. You know what I'm saying? You know, we from Milwaukee. You know, once you go out that door, man, mama can't save you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know what I'm saying? they gonna save you is that nine. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mm-hmm. that, that tech, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or that switch or that, uh, or that <coughs> extended clip. So, so, oh, so, 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 so now, you know what I'm saying? I mean, she thinking she raised you, she pat you upside your head, you're 6'3, you're 300 pounds, she don't even face you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're going out there, you're gonna do it anyway. And then, you know what I'm saying? The women say, okay, I don't need no man. But the question to all the sisters is who's raising the killers? If there's a lot of killers out here, somebody raised them. If the man is not in the household, what is going on? Mm-hmm. Do we got to question ourselves what is the problem? The problem is not that you don't need a man. The problem is that you don't have a man in the household. Because God gave a man something that he didn't give a woman. And that's an Adam apple. That Adam apple, when you say sit your ass down, that boy sit out. My father, when he told me to sit down, I know he meant business. My mama told me to sit down. I challenged her. I played with her. She hit me. I laughed. You ain't did nothing. Mm-hmm. See, what makes a lion, the king of the jungle, is not his claws or his teeth, but it's his roar. 
You know, that authoritarian voice, that authoritarian sound in his voice that makes the whole jungle tremble. What makes the man the father of the household or the head of the household yeah. is his Adam's out. Any right. child that grows up in a two-parent uh, a household, his prospects are way greater than somebody that don't grow up. And a woman, no matter how much she tries, she cannot raise a man. And then when a woman is in the mirror and they're getting done, they put their makeup up on and stuff like that. A three-year-old child, when you leave, he put his feet in your shoes. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he put makeup on, he put the wig on. We see it all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no father. I, you know what I used to be doing? I used to be trying to put on my father's tie, put his suit on. And I thought I was my daddy. You need that imagery, right? That's very important in the household. When, when, the, when that's absent of the household, which you, you get a lot of homosexuality. Because predators, guess what they prey on? They prey on young men that shows femininity. Mm -hmm. And then what they do, they end up taking these boys a uh, 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 situation, mm -hmm. and then you know what I'm saying. After they take that situation, you know what I'm saying. You know, yeah. ima imagine a young boy, 16, being molested by a man, 40, 50, and he suck on his penis, and that young boy ejaculate from the feeling of that man in that man's mouth. Who to say that that ain't the feeling that he gonna want continuously? Who mm -hmm. who gonna say that he ain't gonna be confused? And say, this is what I want. Yeah, that's the same. Now I don't have no problem with people that's homosexual. My brother was a homosexual. My my brother that died from AIDS, he was a homosexual. Like literally, Elijah was a homosexual. You know what I'm saying? He messed with me. He was my blood brother. You know what I'm saying? I had no problem with him. You know, mm -hmm. I loved him either way. Before he died, man, I took him out to eat. I kicked him with him, everything, because I know that AIDS was, was tearing me down. I was out there mashing like an Idaho potato. I was pimping like a motherfucker. I came home and I spent time with little bro, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but that ain't the problem. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the problem is when you raise a young man in a feminine environment, there's a couple things that can happen. You know what I mean? He's going to develop feminine characteristics. Those mm -hmm. feminine characteristics can attract men that are psycho and that are predators. You know what I'm saying? You're also going to give them a lot of emotionalism. And a lot of times you see these brothers out here killing. That's why I say, who's ready to kill him? That's not a man. Mm -hmm. Anybody can pull a trigger. That's emotions. Somebody step on your shoes and you kill them? Mm -hmm. Somebody uh, 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 drive in your lane and you get mad and you get rose and you kill them? That's not manhood. Because a man going to never let his emotions supersede his intelligence. Mm -hmm. Emotions is a woman's trick. You know, a woman get mad and she's going to take the key and she's going to key your car. She's going to bust the windows. You know what I'm saying? She's going to throw your phone down. She's going to talk loud in Walmart. She's going to trip out. And I think that a lot of that, you know, when a child, a young man grow mm -hmm. up seeing that, he developed a lot of those characteristics. So what is the solution, though, for the women? Like, what the women was like, well, Ken, what, what is the solution that you would recommend us to do? Like, what would we have to, like, because I, cause I see a lot of women saying this a lot. Man, I got to be strong. I got to survive. And I feel like women be attracting the wrong it, it, type it keep of men. real. Keep it real. Yeah. Keep it real. You say, hey, look, son, I'm not your daddy. Most of them say, I'm your mom and your daddy. Quit lying to that child. You are not the mom and the daddy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's not true. Say, I'm not your daddy. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you over there, you know, to the hip-hop fraternity. I'm going to take you over there to this program. I'm going to take you over to the boys club. I'm going to take you over there with some men that, and these men I'm going to entrust uh, 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 you with these men, you know, who I've studied, and make sure that you know you watch them, and you and you and before you put your child in somebody else's hand, and say, look, he's going to be a mentor. Get your son a mentor. Let him get used to interacting with men. You know, let him see what a man do. You know, you know, if, if you can, and if you trust, you know, one of your uncles, or you trust one of your cousins, let him go over there and spend a couple of days with him, so you can see that man shaving, so you can see that man put this towel, so you can see that man, you know. Mm -hmm. Doing manly things okay. because when he, you're around a woman, I don't care. You're still gonna be a woman. You are gonna have a lot of femininity going on, mm -hmm. and that can cause that child to. And then, and then if he don't have a father, and he get out there join the game, depending on like Big Me said, he said it right. If you got a killing, a killing ass leader, if you got mm -hmm. a dope son that leader, you got a smooth ass leader. That's what type of person you gonna yeah. be. If the if the game say. Yeah. Man, you got to kill a nigga to join? Yeah. Or say, man, listen, man, we finna go ride on niggas? Show me your leader, I'll tell you what type of crew you got. Absolutely. You got to get money, get nigga, the rest of the niggas get money. You got a robber type nigga that's a hit, everybody robbers. Well, it's like whatever the nigga lead, that's where everybody So that's, what, that's the solution, man. Get 
a That's nice true. mentor. If the father's not in the house, you know, uh, and, and women, quit telling the children that their daddy don't want to see them when you really jealous of that, about, the, about the other bitch. You know what I'm saying? You know, nigga, this crazy pimp, nigga call and and, and, and she argued with you on the phone. Right. And you say, I just want to talk to my daughter. No, you ain't talking to him. You ain't talking to her. And then she say, she hang on the phone. Your daddy ain't shit. The child think that it's a problem between him and the parent. Mm -hmm. The parent ain't tripping. The mama's tripping, so she taking that tripping yeah, and know. putting it on the father. So a lot of times, dudes be out here, they think that they don't have a relationship with their child, or the child don't think the father care, and it's the total opposite. Mm -hmm. She mad because you might be kicking with her ex-girlfriend. She mad because you kicking with a girl that she didn't like. So she don't want to develop that relationship between you and the kid. And a lot of bras, when they be talking about uh, child support, they really mean adult support. A lot of these bras take their, their, their child support. Yeah, they buy, yeah, and they yeah. buy, they buy, they, they buy a Zaza, my it's nigga. It's not child support, it's adult support. Hey, man, listen. It's not Zaza, man. Man, listen, brother, I just want to let you know, man, we done ran out of time, man, but I definitely want to let you know, bro, I appreciate you. We locked in for life. Man, you one of the pioneers in Milwaukee, one of the first to ever, everywhere you went, you screamed Milwaukee, man. I want to tell you, I appreciate you, man, for everything you have ever contributed to the culture, to the city. Man, your, your work will not be, never go unnoticed, man. As long as I'm alive, man, I'm going to keep stumping the pavement man, you, and putting on for you, man. Too, and brother. I really appreciate you, brother. Like, man, you 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 a legend and you live it, man. man. I, I want to I wanna, I wanna, I wanna invite you to the hip hop fraternity, man. I want you to join forces with us, man. Oh, for sure. You know, hey, man, we all about love, uh, peace, and respect. And, you know, we about building. And one thing about the hip hop fraternity, if you join the hip hop fraternity, you still can be everything you is. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just like being in the Republican or the Democratic Party. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you may be a lawyer, doctor, or right, a, right, a right. lawyer, still, a surgeon, yeah. but you're still a Democrat. So that's for all sure, it is, man. man. We just inviting brothers like you. We need power for brothers like you in the movement, man. So, you know, I'm inviting you to be a member of the hip hop fraternity. Hey, y'all heard him. Y'all heard from the kid, man. It's official, man. Hip hop fraternity, man. Hip -hop Make sure y'all tap in, man. Listen, man, this is really speaking of podcast, man. Y'all know what it is, man. Another episode down. Ah!